Across the world, we burn piles of branches and leaves, energy and potential lost to the sky. The ash is scattered, and we water our fields, hoping for new life. But why burn what could help us hold water? Burning clears land, but we lose more than carbon. We destroy a natural reservoir built over years. In forests, fallen leaves and wood hold moisture and feed life. No one burns or waters the forest, yet it thrives. What if, instead of burning, we buried that wood? Imagine a garden nourished from a hidden storehouse below. Can we learn from the forest's quiet endurance? The answer may be just beneath our feet. Most gardens today demand constant attention, tilling, fertilizing, watering. They're beautiful but fragile, always thirsty and dependent. But imagine a garden with a memory of water, able to withstand drought for a season or more. A place where soil grows richer each year, without endless inputs. This is the promise of working with nature's cycles of decay and renewal. It's a shift from managing a garden to cultivating an ecosystem. The process is slower, but the rewards last for generations. By storing today's surplus, fallen branches and woody stems, we prepare for tomorrow's scarcity. Such a garden becomes a living battery, charged with water and life. The goal, a self-regulating system, like a mature woodland. Forests don't panic in drought, their deep, spongy soil holds reserves. Life within the soil breaks down organic matter, feeding plants steadily. By mimicking this, we create gardens that are not just productive but resilient. The secret is building for the long term, not just the next harvest. The method is simple. Dig a trench, fill it with old logs and branches, then cover with soil. You've created a buried log pile beneath your garden. At first, it looks like any other bed, but underground, transformation begins. The wood acts as a sponge, soaking up rain and locking moisture deep in the earth. This hidden reservoir sustains plants through dry spells. As the wood decomposes, it becomes a haven for fungi, bacteria, and earthworms. These organisms break down the wood, slowly releasing nutrients. The process turns logs into rich, stable humus, nature's slow-release fertilizer. Nutrients once locked in wood become available to plant roots. The garden begins to feed itself from below. This isn't a quick fix, but a foundation for decades of fertility. The buried wood becomes the engine that powers a thriving, self-sustaining garden. A log is more than dead wood. It's a honeycomb of tiny vessels, perfect for absorbing and holding water. This structure turns buried wood into a natural water bank. The high carbon content feeds the soil food web for years. Fungi, the master decomposers, break down tough lignin, creating bridges that move water and nutrients to plant roots. This symbiosis is the foundation of healthy ecosystems. As wood decays, it generates gentle warmth, extending the growing season and protecting roots from frost. In cool climates, this bottom heat can make all the difference. Over time, the wood breaks down into humus, black, crumbly, nutrient-rich soil. Humus holds water and nutrients, supports soil life, and creates perfect structure for roots. By burying wood, we start a process that builds topsoil from the bottom up. It's not a temporary fix, but a legacy that enriches the garden for generations. The buried wood is a slow-burning furnace, quietly fueling abundance. This is how we build soil that lasts. This method isn't new, it's ancient wisdom rediscovered. In the Alps, farmers practiced hugel kultur, mound culture, by burying wood to create fertile, water-holding beds. These mounds offered more growing space, captured warmth and, most importantly, stored water and nutrients. Even decades later, abandoned hugel kultur beds reveal rich black soil where logs once lay. 
These gardens were built to last, sustaining crops through dry summers with little irrigation. The farmers weren't just planting for themselves, but for future generations. They saw fallen trees as resources, not waste. Their success is written in the landscape, a testament to long-term thinking. This isn't theory, it's a proven, time-tested strategy. By observing the forest, they created abundance in harsh conditions. Their wisdom offers a model for sustainable agriculture today. Austrian farmer Sepp Holzer brought Hugelkultur to new heights at his alpine farm, the Kremeterhof. On steep marginal land, he built massive raised beds filled with wood, transforming the landscape. These beds act as terraces, prevent erosion, and store water and nutrients for years. The decomposing wood creates microclimates, allowing him to grow cherries, apples, even lemons at high altitude. Holzer's gardens need no irrigation or external fertilizers, even in drought. Each year, the soil grows richer as the wood turns to humus. His farm is a living laboratory, proving this method works on a grand scale. It's not just a garden, it's a profitable, sustainable enterprise. Visitors see citrus trees thriving in snow, a testament to the power of buried wood. Holzer's work shows that by partnering with nature, we can create abundance where none seemed possible. If this method is so effective, why did we abandon it? The rise of industrial agriculture demanded flat, uniform fields for machines. Raised beds and mounds became obstacles, not assets. Burning debris was faster, and synthetic fertilizers promised instant results. Government policies encouraged land clearing and chemical use. The slow wisdom of buried wood was sidelined, not disproven. It survived only in the margins, in the gardens of unconventional farmers. Our focus shifted to speed and scale, leaving resilience and sustainability behind. This method isn't a cure-all. It has limits. The initial labor is significant. Digging trenches and moving logs is hard work. But the payoff is decades of less watering, weeding, and fertilizing. Wood choice matters. Some rot slowly, others quickly. Some, like black walnut, can inhibit plant growth. Use what's locally available, mixing types for best results. It's ideal for new beds in poor soil or dry areas, less so for established gardens. Bigger, deeper beds hold more water and last longer. Patience is key. The first year may see a temporary nitrogen dip, easily fixed with compost or manure. After that, the system stabilizes and grows more fertile each year. Build for the long term and nature will do the rest. As water grows scarce and soils deplete, old methods become urgent lessons. The self-watering garden is more than a technique. It's a metaphor for resilience. Nature wastes nothing. Every fallen branch is an investment in the future. Burning brush is burning our savings. Burying it is building wealth for generations. This is a shift from disposable culture to regeneration. The principle extends beyond gardens. What else do we discard that could become abundance? It's a quiet wisdom, favoring patience and endurance over speed and convenience. The world is full of silent systems, working over decades and centuries. The greatest lesson of buried wood is humility. Nature has solved these problems before us. Our task is to observe, listen, and learn. If we can build a garden that lasts 30 years, maybe we can build a world that lasts centuries. The answers are often slow, quiet, and right beneath our feet. The forest's wisdom is waiting for us to remember.